Hello, Alton here from getblended.org. A little bit of compositing for you today. I want to talk about render passes, specifically the passes available when using the Cycles render engine here in the layers buttons. Normally, when pressing F12 and seeing the render, we get this, the combined pass. Though the combined pass is actually a mixture of all these elements, diffuse, glossy, transmission, subsurface, and they're in the direct, indirect, and color passes. When we split a render up into its components, it opens a lot of possibilities for treating, shall we say, a particularly noisy pass with some post-process effect, or at least it enables us to visually kind of see where passes are noisy and maybe take some actions to address it. The possibilities don't end there, obviously, it's just a quick example. Any number of effects could be added to the individual passes. What I'm interested in showing is, fairly quickly, the method for recombining them again to make the final image without getting bogged down in a specific compositing task. Uh, so, if that sounds interesting, I'll carry on and uh, start with describing the scene. So I've got a number of objects in the scene and they've got some different materials on them. So the cube's got a diffuse material, we've got an emission sort of plane here, we've got a glass material, the floor has got a bit of a mixture between glossy and diffuse. If I press shift and Z entered rendered mode, we can see that I've also got an HDR image in the background that's rather garish, but that should give us the chance to show how that works. So before I take a render, I need to enable all the passes that I'm going to be using. So let's enable all of the diffuse, glossy, transmission, subsurface. I haven't actually got any subsurface materials in the scene, uh, just because it, they don't render on the GPU without using the experimental kernel. It slow things down. Include them anyway, just to, just to show how that goes. Enable the normal pass there. And we'll press F12 and take a render. So I'd like to talk a little bit about this image just quickly. On the header of the 3D view, we can see that we're looking at the combined pass, but we also have access here to the individual passes that we enabled in the layers buttons. What that means is if we go to image and save a copy, we can actually save all of those passes as an open EXR multi-layer. So it's a single image that contains all of the passes. So we'll save that as render. And I'll show you what's going on with that in the compositing layout, which we'll move to now. So we're going to click, make sure we're using the compositing nodes, first of all, and click use nodes. And normally you will be faced with a render layers node. I've been playing around with this before, so it didn't work for me that time and a composite node and the first output of the render layers would be plugged to the composite there. And here you can see on this node how we've got access to all of the passes. Shift and space maximize our working environment there. So if I go shift A and just add in an input and an image and we'll go open and we'll find the, the uh, EXR render and I'm from the desktop and you should see that here we have access to all the same passes except this we could save for later and come back and do our compositing um, sometime after the fact we wouldn't have to re-render so in fact you can save whole animations as sequences of EXRs if you're going to be compositing later just be aware they can get sizable depending on the amount of passes you have and stuff like that so I don't need that right now, so X and delete it. We'll just be working with the render layers node. And I want to be able to see what we're doing, so I'm going to turn on the backdrop. And in order to see what's in the backdrop, we can control and shift and left click, and that will connect a viewer node to the first of our outputs there. If we use the control and shift and left click, we can cycle through our different outputs and we can see them all there. And what you should see is typically the indirect passes are going to be fairly noisy. So this is where splitting the render up into its component parts lets you observe which passes are noisy and maybe throw some more samples at them. Or maybe we could do a kind of selective blur on one of these to see if we can improve the result without increasing the render time. 
So the method for this is fairly simple. We need to add together the direct and indirect passes and then multiply them by the color. So this looks thusly. If we add a mix node, we'll change the method over to add and we'll take the diffuse direct and add it to the diffuse indirect. Let's just collapse that node so we don't start making too much of a mess. Shift A, add in another color mix and we'll change the method over to multiply. And we'll take the result of adding the direct and indirect passes and multiply them by the color. So control shift left click. What we've got here is essentially the combined diffuse pass, if you will. So we need to repeat this step now for the glossy. So we'll take the glossy direct, glossy indirect, and multiply it by the glossy color. So there we are, the glossy uh, sort of combined pass, if you will. Once again, transmission direct, transmission indirect, transmission color. You can see that there. Now, despite the fact I haven't got any subsurface materials, we'll take them anyway, because I guess we could add them later on and you see that's there's nothing in there but we can add this together safely uh, anyway so a couple more add nodes because all of these passes now that we've combined them need to be added together so shift a add in color mix we'll change the method over to add let's just collapse that down let's add these two together and we'll go shift d let's just cut that for now and we'll add these two together and we'll add in another one that's set to add and we'll add the result of adding all of those together and we'll have a look at it now the only thing missing from this is the emission pass which would contain the emission plane which was kind of in the top left and the environment so these guys are back here now so we go shift a or, or duplicate a, an existing add node i suppose would be easier we need to take we need to add these two passes together and then add them to the rest of the result. So we'll take our emission and we'll take our environment and we're just gonna shift and mouse over there just to create those uh, reroute nodes. Take this over here and duplicate that and then we can add in the added together the emission and environment passes and take a look at it. And we've recreated now the image as it was in the beginning as the as the combined pass but this time we have the access to all of the individual passes so that we could manipulate them sort of en route to the final render in order to check our work we can add in a color and a mix node and if i change the method over to difference this will show a black screen basically if we if we have no differences any differences will show up as a color so i take the two outputs here and control and shift and left click and we can see that we've got a black screen that's a zero difference there's no difference between the top and bottom inputs if i was to change you know add in create a difference i could just change one of these nodes at random you can see how that's working there's showing up a difference now between the two images but if i leave that at one there is no difference at all so control and x let's delete that guy so what i was talking about maybe what you'd like to do is is address the noise in one of the indirect passes so one way to do that would be perhaps to use a bilateral blur node which you may see that we could almost do a whole video about bilateral blur to be honest um i'll just show you an example so take the diffuse indirect pass you can see how it looks after the bilateral blur bilateral blur has this determinator option now if you've got some way of creating an image which shows where the edges of objects are then you can use the determinator to help things along one way to do that and the reason i included the normal pass is you'll typically see people add together the normal and the z passes here now it looks like a completely white image but if we run it through a uh, normalize i'm looking for vector and normalize then that normalizes it down to values between zero and one and you can see that it's doing a pretty good job at highlighting where the edges of the objects are 
So if we control an X, we can use that then as our determinator here just to help things along a little bit. I'm just going to leave the settings at the default because it's just an example. But now you'd mix this the result of the blurring here back into the diffuse indirect pass up there and then we can take a look at the result. So if I zoom in with Alt and V a little bit, perhaps if we select these and mute them we can see what difference it's made. So M I'm going to mute them. You can see perhaps the cube gets a little bit more noise there so let's unmute them. I can see how they're clearing up. So this is without and this is with. So that was all really, how to split and combine the render passes back together so that you can manipulate them en route and add whatever effects you, you really need. You could go down the list here and blur each of the passes without having to re-render and throw more samples at it if you think it would help. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.